Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the My Night Raw review. My Night Raw tonight was from Madison Square Garden here in New York. And didn't go to the show tonight. It was why I spend money on Raw. But this was My Night Raw's go home show for SummerSlam, which is this Saturday. And My Night Raw tonight. Surprisingly, I thought this sh was a decent show, in my opinion. I mean, the first hour was very good. It was fast-paced, and I was like, wow, it's almost 9 o'clock. Th that first hour just flew by fast. And the second hour, I thought, you know, flew by uh, pretty uh, decently as well. And then the third hour was just meh, in my opinion. But it was a decent show tonight. It wasn't great by any means, though, but it wasn't bad. But tonight on My Night Raw, we saw Drew McIntyre versus Austin Theory. And then Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley versus Theory and Sheamus. The Mysterios end up taking on Finn Balor and Damian Priest, to which tonight uh, we celebrated 20 years of Rey Mysterio which Rey Mysterio has been in WWE for 20 years. We saw Alexa Bliss versus Dewdrop. We saw Dolph Ziggler and AJ Styles versus the Alpha Academy. And in the main event, we had a six-man tag. Where it was the Bloodline, the Usos and Roman Reigns versus the Street Profits and Riddle. And of course, you had to have Roman Reigns on the show to sell tickets because it's Madison Square Garden. And this was a sold-out show tonight. This uh, Money Night Raw was sold out at Madison Square Garden. So, good job on them for selling out the Garden. And we didn't get Edge tonight. You know, there was talks of Edge returning uh, tonight at the Garden. But he did not show up. He was not featured. But overall... My Night Raw was a decent show tonight. wasn't bad. But before I get into the news, just want to show you all this uh, piece of news that was released today. And I am so happy about this. Triple H, Paul Levesque, is now head of creative in WWE. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah! What a great day this is. And then and that means Bruce Pritchard has been demoted. Bruce Pritchard is no longer head of creative. And here's the article to uh, show you all uh, this news of Triple H being head of creative. Here it is. This Coming from CagesideSeats.com, Triple H is named head of WWE Creative, meaning Bruce Pritchard has been demoted. Great day. Great day this is for the company. And that dark cloud that was once upon WWE, those dark clouds are now departing and it's a sunny day for WWE so this is good news so Triple H is named head of creative you know Vince McMahon on Friday announced his retirement it says right here Triple H will lead creative taking over for his father-in-law the news was announced in a press release confirming that Paul Levesque's wife Stephanie will serve as new C new co-CEO with former president and chief revenue officer Nick Khan, which we all know about that. So this is the, uh, the press release uh, that was distributed by WWE. It says right here, WWE and board of directors announced new co-CEOs Stephen McMahon and Nick Khan. WWE and its board of directors today announced the appointment of Stephen McMahon 
and Nick Khan as co-chief executive officers. Ms. McMahon has also been appointed chairwoman of the board, and Mr. Khan will continue to serve as a member of the board. These appointments follow Vince McMahon's retirement announcement on Friday, July 22nd. So it says right here, we are grateful for the opportunity to lead WWE together with our unmatched management team, said Ms. McMahon and Mr. Khan. We recognize this is a tremendous opportunity and responsibility, and we look forward to serving the WWE universe. Additionally, WWE executive Paul Levesque will assume all responsibilities re related to WWE's creative in addition to his regular duties. So that was the other uh, press release. And this is good news. This is great news. And I'm really happy about this because with Triple H now being head of creative, we could finally see change in WWE. You know, change in creative, which Triple H is head of. We can see uh, change in the product, the WWE product, change in storylines. And hopefully this leads to uh, changes, to good changes to come. And hopefully with uh, Triple H here as head of creative, you know, hopefully he could get rid of, and I know he will, he'll possibly retire that god-awful 24-7 title, which we all know Every time it's featured on the show is complete fucking garbage. It's a dumpster fire of epic portions when it gets featured. It is awful fucking television. So I hope Triple H retires that belt for that belt to be never seen again. And the tag team division needs to be built back up. We all know that the tag team division on both Raw and SmackDown are fucking terrible. So this is a chance for the tag team division to be built back up, be good again, so we can actually see good to great tag team matches on WWE television. Build back the mid-card. That's another thing. We need uh, world championships. We need one world champion on Monday Night Raw and one world champion on SmackDown. We need those. And also uh, the women's uh, division. The women's division could be uh, better. And I hope you know, Triple H ends up uh, focusing on that also and making the, uh, the women's division uh, very good. So, I mean, that's why I see, you know, in the changes in WWE. So, but... This news with Triple H being head of creative, it is awesome. Why? I don't know how you would not love this uh, type of news. This is great news. You know, now that Bruce Pritchard has been demoted, which, got to give a clap there. It is great there. So, we're not going to expect change overnight. This is going to uh, be... You no, know, while I give it a year, I give a, a year until we see change. So probably as we go into a new year in 2023, that's when I expect WWE to have a full change. You know, change in creative, change in storylines, and change in the WWE product. So that is when I will. That is what we'll see. And expect change come the new year. So, but that's uh, my uh, thoughts on Triple H being uh, head of creative. This is great news, and it's going to put WWE uh, back to where they were years ago. You know, and getting uh, good storylines. You know, getting storylines. You know that progress, and hopefully. A lot less of the rematches. So, but this is great news, and I'm happy about it. So there you go. That's it with the, uh, the awesome news there with Triple H now being head of creative for WWE. This is something that we have anticipated for years, and it's finally coming to be. 
So Vince McMahon retires and John Laurinaitis no longer there. Bruce Pritchard has now been uh, demoted from creative and Triple H comes in. Great. This is great for the company. And we are finally going to see change in WWE. But like I said, don't expect those changes to happen overnight. Like I said, I give it a year until we see a full change in the product. But moving on to the review. Monday Night Raw opened up tonight from the Garden and we saw... Logan Paul and The Miz, they were already brawling in the ring. And both guys were throwing punches. Refs and officials end up making their way down to the ring. And they end up finally breaking up uh, Logan Paul and The Miz. Jimmy Smith on commentary. He ended up saying that Logan Paul was in the ring with a mic right before the live broadcast began. And Logan Paul called out The Miz. And Miz ended up coming out. And the brawl between uh, Miz and Logan Paul began. So they ended up showing a replay of what happened before uh, My Eye Raw went live. So, different way to uh, open up the show tonight. It was a very uh, unique way to start the show. You know, with just two guys already brawling before the show went live. And then we saw the bloodline. We had the tribal chief, Roman Reigns, the Usos and Paul Heyman. They end up making their way out. So the crowd were behind Roman here. They were chanting Roman as they end up, as the crowd ended up waiting for Roman to speak. So Roman ended up getting on the mic and he ended up requesting Madison Square Garden to acknowledge him. And the fans cheered for him. Reigns then summoned Paul Heyman. Ended up saying that he doesn't feel like talking anymore. So Roman ended up passing the mic back to Paul Heyman. So Paul Heyman got on the mic. He ended up welcoming everyone to the island of relevancy. So the mic ended up cutting out. And there was a, you know, mic issues here as Paul Heyman was talking. <laughs> was it, who was cutting the mics? Was it Bruce Pritchard because he got pissed that he's no longer head of creative? So we had uh, Paul Heyman end up saying that the sound guy must be from Jersey. And that he could be the next guy to go. Meaning to get fired. And like I said, was that sound guy Bruce Pritchard? Poyman ended up saying that Sunday marks 700 days that Roman has held the title. Poyman ended up saying that this plays perfectly into Brock Lesnar, the guy who likes to piss on everyone's parade. Poyman ended up recalling Brock Lesnar ruining Randy Couture's title ring when Lesnar was in UFC. Paul Heyman ended up recalling Brock Lesnar ruining Undertaker's WrestleMania winning streak. And also John Cena's comeback last year at SummerSlam. To which Paul Heyman ended up saying that Brock Lesnar is going to try to ruin the party for the Tribal Chief. Paul Heyman ended up comparing uh, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns rivalry to Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock and Hulk Hogan versus Randy Savage. Obviously, this rivalry between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns doesn't compare to those two rivalries. It doesn't. It doesn't compare to Austin and Rock and doesn't compare to Hogan and Savage. Poyman then ended up saying that it's time for Lesnar to go back to Saskatchewan and slaughter a bunch of hogs. So Poyman ended up hyping up uh, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns' match this Saturday at SummerSlam 
which is going to be the last match ever between Reigns and Lesnar. No, it's not. It's not going to be the last match ever. You know, I'm saying that Reigns will rid himself of Lesnar once and for all. Playman end up saying that after Saturday night, Lesnar will not be able to stand at all. So Austin Theory end up coming out. Austin Theory got on the mic. He up saying that it's funny that the bloodline talks a lot, but they've forgotten about him. So Theory I'm saying that he'll take back his United States Championship Saturday night and then cash in his Money in the Bank contract and win the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. And when he was saying this, Theory ended up getting the what treatment from the crowd. The same thing that he got last week. You know, the crowd last week ended up giving Theory the what uh, chance. So Reigns got on the mic. And he up asking if Theory is going to stop right there. He up saying that if Theory is going to come into his arena, he should at least get in the ring, acknowledge his tribal chief. Theory then got in the ring. He was ready with the Money in the Bank briefcase. So Reigns chuckled. You have seen Theory is a little nervous. Reigns then turned to Paul Heyman. You have seen that they like Theory. Reigns ended up telling Theory, well, your daddy's not here anymore. <laughs> and the crowd went, oh. <laughs> yeah, I love that line that Roman said there. Your daddy's not here anymore. Me and Triple H put that in because Vince is retired now. Because, of course, you all know that Theory was Vince's boy. So Reigns ended up telling Theory, this is his ring. So the crowd was chanting, Daddy's boy, to Theory. And then the next chant was, who's your daddy? Which the crowd ended up chanting to Theory. So Reigns ended up saying that if Theory keeps messing around, the tribal chief will be his daddy. So Reigns ended up saying, I run the garden now. So the bloodline ends up leaving. We had, I think it was Jimmy Uso. He ended up taking a shot at Theory, a cheap shot. Theory ended up responding by whacking him with the Money in the Bank briefcase. And the bloodline paused, left it off, and they continued to leave. So the crowd was chanting Theory with Who's Your Daddy chants. And that was how the segment ended. But this was a good segment here. You know, Roman Reigns, you know, coming out there, you know, just uh, telling the garden to acknowledge him. Playing him and going on saying, oh, Sunday uh, marks 700 days that Roman has held the title, which is a good run. It's a great run. So, and then the whole thing with uh, Roman saying to Theory, your daddy's uh, gone. You know, your daddy's not here anymore. That was great. Love that. Just was a very entertaining segment this was. So then as Mike and I were all came back from the commercial, Austin Theory was still in the ring. He had a mic in hand, and he barely got a word out because he got interrupted by Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre ended up coming out, and Corey Graves on commentary, he ended up saying that McIntyre doesn't even go here since McIntyre's, you know, on SmackDown. So then we had the first match of the night, which was Drew McIntyre versus Austin Theory, which this was decent. This was a fresh match here. You know, we, had, we didn't see McIntyre and Theory go at it before. So this was something new and something fresh. Good on that for uh, WWE. For giving us something new. So the match ended up starting. We had McIntyre end up delivering a clothesline to Theory. McIntyre then chopped Theory into the corner. McIntyre powered Theory up from one knee and he delivered a vertical suplex to Theory. Theory fought back with some punches. Theory ended up delivering a chop to McIntyre, but it had 
no effect on him. It didn't do nothing to McIntyre. So McIntyre then turned Theory into the corner, fired back with some punches. McIntyre then tossed Theory out of the corner with another vertical suplex. So Theory ended up delivering a jawbreaker to Drew McIntyre, and he whipped McIntyre into the corner. And McIntyre ended up coming straight out with another clothesline to Theory, to which McIntyre followed up with a overhead suplex. And then he delivered the Future Shock DDT to Theory. So McIntyre was ready and signaling to go for the Claymore. But Theory ended up rolling out of the ring, out to the floor. Theory ended up catching McIntyre, coming out with a kick. And McIntyre quickly turned that. And he ended up press slamming Theory onto the commentary table. So then as Mighty Night Raw came back from the commercial... McIntyre then ended up in a tilted wall backbreaker to Theory. He went for the cover, to which Theory kicked out too. Theory ended up avoiding a charge of McIntyre, and McIntyre ended up spilling over the top rope out to the floor. So McIntyre ended up getting up on the ring apron. Theory ended up slamming him against the ring post. So Theory ended up falling out to the floor. He followed McIntyre out to the floor. He ended up throwing McIntyre into the ring steps. Theory ended up getting back into the ring. He was waiting on McIntyre to come into the ring. McIntyre ended up beating the ref's count. And Theory ended up delivering some punches to McIntyre. So McIntyre ended up blocking a suplex attempt by Theory. And McIntyre ended up uh, delivering another vertical suplex to Theory. So we had McIntyre end up uh, delivering a spine buster to Theory. He ended up going for the cover, to which Theory kicked out at two. McIntyre was lining up to hit the Claymore to Theory. But we had the Brawling Brutes. We had Sheamus, Ridge Holland, and Butch. They end up running down to the ring. The ref ended up calling for the bell. So Bobby Lashley's music end up hitting. Bobby Lashley ended up running down to the ring. Him and McIntyre end up taking out the Brawling Brutes. And Theory tried to sneak up on both Lashley and McIntyre with the briefcase. And Lashley and McIntyre caught Theory. And so Theory ended up running out of the ring. And you all know where this is headed. This is typical WWE 101. We got ourselves a Teddy Long holla 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 tag team match. So as Money Night Raw came back from the commercial, we had a tag team match. To which Adam Pierce uh, made during the break. So it was Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus and Austin Theory. And this was a good match here. Theory ended up getting McIntyre down. He tagged in Sheamus. Sheamus started stomping away at McIntyre in the corner. Sheamus ended up leaning a knee into McIntyre's face in the corner. McIntyre fought back, and Sheamus ended up cutting McIntyre off with an Irish curse backbreaker. Sheamus then started stomping on McIntyre in the center of the ring. He ended up firing forearms to uh, McIntyre's low, lower back. McIntyre then blocked the punch from Sheamus, and he fought back. Sheamus ended up cutting McIntyre off with a punch to his gut. And we had a uh, commentary team end up saying that Sheamus was toying with Theory because uh, Sheamus ended up teasing that old tag in Theory, but Sheamus doesn't reach far enough for Theory to tag uh, Sheamus. So McIntyre then ended up hitting the Glasgow Kiss headbutt to Sheamus. McIntyre tagged in Lashley. Lashley ended up delivering a shoulder tackle to Sheamus, and then a run and clothesline in the corner. Lashley powered up Sheamus with a vertical suplex. He ended up catching Austin Theory coming in with a flatliner. Lashley then clotheslined Sheamus over the top rope out to the floor. So Lashley went out to the floor. He charged toward Austin Theory. But Sheamus ended up interrupting and delivered a rising knee strike to Lashley. So we saw in the ring, Butch was staring down McIntyre, who was on the apron. Rich Holland tried to do a sneak attack on McIntyre, but McIntyre ended up taking out both Butch and Rich Holland. And that's when uh, the ref ended up ejecting Butch and Rich Holland from ringside. So it was now two on two. 
without having a distraction from Butch and Ridge Holland out there. So then as Mike and I all came back from the commercial, Austin Theory was in control of the match on Bobby Lashley with, can you guess it, a chin lock. Theory ended up switching to a, a traditional chin lock to keep Lashley grounded, but Lashley ended up fighting to his feet. Theory then ended up clubbing uh, Lashley with a forearm. He tagged in Sheamus. Sheamus ended up knocking McIntyre off the ring apron. He cheap shotted him. Lashley ended up catching Sheamus with a spine buster. So McIntyre was back on the apron, and we had uh, Lashley tagging in McIntyre. Theory also tagged in, so it was Theory and McIntyre going at it. McIntyre delivered a overhead suplex and a reverse neckbreaker to Theory. He ended up going for the future shock DDT, but Theory ended up escaping. But Theory ended up running into a sit-out powerbomb delivered by McIntyre, to which McIntyre ended up going for the cover. And Theory ended up kicking out too. Lashley tagged in. Sheamus ended up sending McIntyre out to the floor. So McIntyre and Sheamus were brawling. Sheamus ended up pinning the white noise to McIntyre on the floor. And Theory ended up signaling for the A-Town down. And he hoisted up Bobby Lashley. And Theory noticed Dolph Ziggler made his way out. Lashley then slipped out the back. He ended up putting Theory in the hurt lock. And there you go. Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre ended up winning the match. Overall, this was a decent match here. Post-match, Theory was posing at the top of the entrance aisle. He turned around and the Usos delivered double super kicks to Theory. Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman then walked out. Reigns ended up laying the Money in the Bank briefcase across Austin Theory's chest. And pretty much that was that. But overall, decent match. And then we went to the commentary table and they showed us a video package of Rey Mysterio. Of course, highlighting his 20 years in the company. Very well done video package uh, it was. It also showed when Ray uh, won the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania 22, where he defeated Randy Orton and Kurt Angle in the Triple Threat match. Kurt Angle was the World Heavyweight Champion at that time. So it was a big highlight uh, for Ray Mysterio there at WrestleMania 22 in Chicago of him winning the uh, World Heavyweight Championship. Just great moment. That was a very well done uh, video package highlighting uh, Ray's 20 years in the company. And I can't believe it's been you know 20 years that Ray has been with the company. Same for John Cena. I'm like when I see when I saw 20 years of John Cena and 20 years of Ray Mysterio, I'm like man, I'm getting old. <laughs> but like I said, very well done uh, video package on uh, Ray. And it showed a video from earlier in the day where Ray ended up arriving to the garden with Dominic and the rest of uh, his family. So we saw that. And then we saw Kevin Patrick. Kevin Patrick was backstage. He was interviewing Dolph Ziggler. Kevin Patrick ended up asking Dolph Ziggler to explain his actions about what he's doing with uh, Austin Theory. Dolph ended up saying to Kevin Patrick that he just thinks Theory needs to be taught a lesson. So then Styles ended up walking uh, there, and Styles was going to say you know, a few words, but then he got interrupted by the, Al the Alpha Academy, you know, Chad Gable. God, I'm sick of hearing, shoosh, and a oh, thank you. Chad Gable, he needs a gimmick change, in my opinion. He comes off fucking lame with him going, shush and a thank you. So Chad Gable ended up talking about theory surpassing AJ Styles and Dolph Ziggler's accomplishments. 
And Gable ended up saying that he wants to beat the jealousy out of Ziggler and Styles tonight. So Styles ended up accepting the challenge. So we got that later in the night. We saw the Alpha Academy versus Styles and Dolph Ziggler. And then we had the 20th anniversary celebration of Rey Mysterio in WWE. So Rey came out along with uh, Dom Nick. Rey got on the mic. We had the fans end up chanting, thank you, Rey, to which he fully deserves this. Rey ended up saying that 20 years is really special. Rey ended up talking about being 14 years old when he had his very first match. And he never imagined he would one day perform inside a WWE ring. You know, saying that the truth is, guys his size were not part of the business back then. Ray ended up saying that he broke that so-called blueprint of what a superstar should look like. Ray then talked about him becoming the World Heavyweight Champion at WrestleMania 22. Like I said, great highlight moment in his career at WrestleMania 22 in Chicago. Ray then ended up saying that he made a lot of friends along the way who paved the way for him. So he mentioned Dean Malenko, Batista, Kurt Angle, Edge, and of course, Eddie Guerrero. You know, Ray and Eddie's feud, you know, in 2005, really uh, did enjoy uh, that feud, you know, with Eddie Guerrero saying to Ray, oh, Dominic is my father, you know, that led to the whole, I'm your poppy, you know, said by Eddie Guerrero, and they had a I'm your poppy shirt, <laughs> which uh, was funny, and then that led to uh, the SummerSlam match for the custody of Dominic, which was the latter match. But really enjoyed uh, Eddie and uh, Ray's feud at that time. It was just entertaining. You know, even at the Great American Bash that year, they had a uh, pretty good match. So the crowd and responded with Eddie Chance. You know, Eddie Guerrero, one of the greatest superstars of uh, all time, in my opinion. WWE Hall of Famer. You know, may he rest in peace. Ray ended up saying that he loves and misses Eddie every day. All of us miss Eddie every day. You know, such a great talent he was and, you know, absolutely uh, great in the ring. Ray then ended up saying that he wouldn't be where he is without him. And he knows Eddie is watching over him every day. You know, I'm sure he is. Ray ended up saying that he feels truly humbled and appreciative for the love and support the fans have given him for the past 20 years. Ray ended up saying that his wife and daughter are watching backstage, and he thanks them for always being there. So, of course, it cut to uh, backstage where, you know, Ray's family were watching, you know, what was going on on, on the TV backstage. Ray ended up telling Dominic, that he's proud of him, and he knows when he's done, Dominic will represent the Mysterio name to the fullest. Ray then thanked the fans one more time, and of course everyone in attendance. He ended up saying that he could be anywhere, but he's in the legendary and iconic Madison Square Garden. So Ray ended up speaking, you know, a few sentences in Spanish, and he got a Good res response from the crowd. So, and then we saw Finn Balor. Finn Balor was approaching the ring from the crowd. He was clapping. And then Damian Priest ended up approaching from the other side of the garden. So they ended up making their way into the ringside area. And that was when my out roll went to commercial. But very good segment this was, you know, for Rey Mysterio. It was done, you know, really well. You know, Rey coming out there, thanking the fans for watching him for 20 years in the company. So, 
it was just great. And I thought that at the end of this, that Dominic was going to turn heel on his father. But I can understand why they didn't do it. This was something special for Ray. But I had the sense while watching this segment, oh, Dominic's going to turn heel. He's going to start you know, being down on his father. But that didn't happen. So then we had the tag team match. We had Ray and Dominic Mysterio versus Damian Priest and Finn Balor. The Flopment Day. So as my eye Raw came back from the commercial, the match was already underway. Balor was in control of the match on Dominic. Dominic then tagged in Ray. Ray ended up in a head scissor takedown to Balor. And then he tagged in Dominic. Dominic then powerbombed Ray on top of Balor. And he ended up going for the cover. Balor kicked out at two. Ray tagged in. He mounted Balor in the corner with some punches. Balor ended up reversing a whip. And Ray ended up hitting hard in the corner. Balor tagged in Priest. Priest ended up delivering a forearm to Ray. Started choking him across the bottom rope. Priest then ended up whipping Ray into the corner. And followed up with a uh, flying back elbow. Priest ended up going for the cover, to which Ray kicked out at two. Priest then ended up grounding Ray with the arm bar and tagged in Balor. Priest ended up slamming Ray, and Balor ended up slingshotting in with a double stomp. Balor started grounding Ray with, can you guess it, a chin lock. Ray then ended up quickly fighting to his feet, ended up hitting Insiguri and tagged in Dominic. Dominic then ended up delivering a cross body, and he ended up going for the cover, and we had Balor end up kicking out too. So Dominic then ended up diving to the outside. He was then caught by Damien Priest. Damien Priest then ended up slamming Dominic into the barricade. And then as Mike and I walk, came back from the commercial, we had Balor and Dominic. They were the legal men in the match. Balor and Dominic then delivered a double clothesline, which led them to taking in Ray and Damien Priest. Ray then delivered a springboard crossbody and a seated senton to Damien Priest from the top rope. Ray ended up going for the cover. Priest kicked out at two. So then Ray charged into a super kick delivered by Damien Priest. Priest ended up going for the cover, to which Ray kicked out at two. Priest then ended up lifting Ray to deliver the Razor's Edge. And Ray ended up escaping with a Hurricanrana to Damien Priest. Priest ended up laying on the middle rope. Balor tagged himself in. He ended up delivering a shotgun drop kick to Ray, to which Balor then ended up going for the coup de grace on Ray, which uh, he did get it. So Balor ended up going for the cover. Dominic ended up breaking up the pin. Priest then ended up getting a, a chair. Balor ended up dumping Dominic out of the ring. So he passed the chair to Balor, to which uh, the referee was distracted. Balor then tossed the chair to Ray. And Balor tried to do the Eddie Guerrero trick to make him think that he got hit with the chair. So Balor was down. The referee didn't turn around to see it. Ray then turned the tables on Balor. He tossed uh, the chair to Balor. Ray ended up going down. The ref then caught Balor. And Ray delivered a drop kick to Balor. Damian Priest ended up uh, getting involved. And Damian Priest ended up going on the middle rope. So Dominic rallied and helped Ray. And they both ended up hitting the uh, 619 on Balor and Priest. Ray then finished off the match. He delivered a splash from the top rope to ba onto Balor. And Ray ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Ray and Dominic ended up winning the match. And the Flotman Day still continues to fail. But overall, this was a good match here. And then we saw the Mysterios celebrating backstage as Money Night Raw came back from the commercial. Ray and Dominic end up entering the room to join the celebration. Ray's daughter, Aaliyah, end up giving a gift to him. Ray opened up the gift. And what was in it was... Ray's ring gear that he wore at Halloween Havoc 
1997. So Ray ended up wanting to know where Aaliyah found it. And she ended up telling him that she had to dig. So it was nice, nice uh, gear that uh, Ray wore at uh, Halloween Havoc 1997. So Ray and Dominic ended up turning around. And we had the return of Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley was in the room. Aaliyah confronted Rhea Ripley and told her to get out of here. Rhea Ripley ended up pie-facing Aaliyah, and Rhea Ripley dragged Dominic out of the room by his hair. Ray ended up following Rhea Ripley out, and he ran into attack by Balor and Damian Priest. And it was uh, Balor's uh, birthday today, so you heard Balor say, oh, it's my birthday today. So they ended up dragging Ray down the hall. Damian Priest ended up powerbombing Ray onto a table. And pretty much that was basically that. So then we went back to the commentary table to which they said that they were disgusted by what just went down. So we had Bianca Belair end up coming out. Bianca Belair was in the ring. She had a mic in hand, and she was going to say a few words, but she got interrupted by Becky Lynch. You know, the Bex Express coming out. The Bex Express is derailing. So Becky Lynch had a mic in hand. Becky Lynch started to speak, with, but Bianca Belair ended up cutting her off. Bianca ended up saying that she's not here to listen to Becky run her mouth. Bianca ended up saying that she runs through her many ESTs. Becky Lynch got frustrated and she laid out Bianca. You know, every week, Becky Lynch's attire that she is wearing continues to get worse and worse and worse. To the point where she's just looking stupid in the uh, clothes or the attire that she comes out with every week. I saw her last week when Becky had the uh, the hood on. A lot of people uh, were uh, meme were memeing that photo and putting a photo of ET when ET was had the hood on top of him. <laughs> it was just hilarious. You know, it was going around online. So Becky Lynch ended up getting frustrated. She laid out Bianca. Bianca took down Becky Lynch. They started brawling in the ring. Becky Lynch was going to hit the manhandle slam, but Bianca ended up escaping. And she ended up lifting Becky Lynch for the KOD, but Becky ended up escaping to the ring apron. She pulled Bianca out by her braid, you know, out by her hair. You know, whenever uh, they go after Bianca, they're always pulling Bianca by her hair. So Bianca ended up tackling Becky Lynch over the commentary table. We had the refs and officials. They ended up separating the both of them. And that was basically that. Well, overall, just very meh, in my opinion. And then we had Sarah Schreiber. Sarah Schreiber was backstage. She was interviewing Alexa Bliss. She ended up asking Bliss about facing Dewdrop and what's next for her. Bliss ended up saying to Sarah Sharper that she doesn't get why Dewdrop and Nikki are so obsessed with her. Nikki A.S.H. Bliss ended up saying that Lily is a number one seller on WWE Shop. Great. Great. So... Bliss was speaking into the camera. She ended up saying that she's neck in line for whoever wins between Bianca and Becky Lynch at SummerSlam. So Alexa Bliss wants a shot at the Royal Women's Championship. So then she made her way out. And then as Monday Night Raw came back from the commercial, we saw the doctors attending to Rey Mysterio backstage. And the Flotman Day stroll up. Dominic ended up going to confront them. So Rhea Ripley ended up walking in, ended up kicking Ray 
right in the shoulder. And that was basically that. And then we had Alexa Bliss versus Dewdrop. Absolutely boring. This match was terrible. Nikki SH, she got on the ring apron. She grabbed Lily. Alexa Bliss ended up knocking Nikki off. And she had turned around right into a crossbody by Dewdrop. To which Dewdrop ended up going for the cover. Bliss ended up kicking out a two. So Dewdrop ended up working over Bliss's left arm. Dewdrop ended up slamming Bliss and went for another cover, to which Bliss ended up kicking out a two. Dewdrop ended up putting Bliss in the Cobra Clutch. Bliss ended up fighting to her feet, ended up punching out of the Cobra Clutch. Dewdrop maintained control of the match. She ended up delivering a short arm clothesline to Alexa Bliss, to which she ended up going for the cover again, and Bliss kicked out a two. We had... Later on, Bliss ended up trying to go for a DDT, but ended up getting powered into the corner by Dewdrop. Bliss ended up climbing to the top turnbuckle, and Nikki knocked her off while the referee, uh, while the referee's back was turned. Dewdrop lifted up Alexa Bliss. Bliss ended up reversing that into a DDT, and Bliss ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Alexa Bliss ended up winning the match. Overall, terrible match. Absolutely boring. And then we had AJ Styles backstage. AJ Styles was, was talking to Logan Paul. Styles ended up saying to Logan Paul that he liked what he did earlier tonight in being up the Miz. And Styles ended up telling Logan Paul if he needs anything to let him know. Styles ended up saying that he doesn't know Logan Paul very well. But he likes The Miz even less. So pretty much that was basically that. And then Logan Paul ended up making his way out for Impulsive TV. So now we're giving Logan Paul a talk show. Great. More use to change the channel every time he's on TV. Should be called Repulsive TV. Because who gives a shit about Logan Paul there? The crowd did not even give one single fuck about Logan Paul. So Logan Paul stepped into the ring. He grabbed the mic. He ended up calling out New York for a cheap pop. Yeah, get a cheap pop. He mentioned his brother, Jake Paul fighting next weekend at the Garden. To which the crowd ended up booing that, which I laughed at. So Logan Paul ended up saying that this is the debut of Impulsive TV. More like Repulsive TV, as I would call it. He ended up saying that he wants to finish what he started earlier. So Logan Paul called out The Miz. The Miz did not come out and Logan Paul ended up saying that he's actually surprised. He called out The Miz again. And The Miz didn't come out. So Logan Paul ended up saying, oh, he's backstage hiding. So Maurice came out. So Maurice ended up making her way out. She had a mic in hand. Maurice ended up telling Logan Paul that she doesn't appreciate how he is talking about her husband. So she did a cheap plug for Ms. and Mrs. Aaron after Monday Night Raw. Maurice then ended up telling Logan Paul not to talk about her kids ever again. She then stepped into the ring. She ended up saying that she doesn't like Logan Paul talking about her husband's package. Meaning Mrs. Tiny Balls. Can't believe we're still on this fucking Tiny balls shit with the Miz. Saying Miz has tiny balls. So the crowd started doing a tiny balls chant. I'm like, oh, make it make this stop. Make this fucking stop. Why is this on TV? I mean, who's writing this shit? 
So Maurice then ended up insisting it's not a thing. Oh, you say it's not a thing, yet there's a shirt on WWE Shop saying, My balls are massive, with a Hello sticker on it, which is the Miz's new shirt. And you say, Oh, it's not a thing. So then Maurice then detailed the average size of a man's testicles. What the fuck is this shit? And she assured Logan Paul that Miz falls within those perimeters. Oh, so now we're writing, oh, about the average size of a man's balls. God, this is so fucking awful. This is so terrible. So Logan Paul ended up asking, who measures their own balls? So then the Miz music ended up playing. He ended up coming out. Miz ended up saying that he does measure his balls. And so does every man in the arena. Unbelievable. Unbelievable how awful this fucking writing is. Here. Miz ended up saying that he gave Logan Paul everything. He ended up saying that if it wasn't for him, he wouldn't have been at WrestleMania. And he wouldn't have a WWE contract. I don't even know why Logan Paul has a WWE contract. So Miz ended up saying that Logan Paul knows everything. But not everything he knows. The Miz knows. So Logan Paul ended up saying that he's not getting nice guy Miz. He's getting main event Miz. So Logan Paul ended up cutting off the Miz. He ended up saying that he called Miz out to fight. And not to talk. Logan Paul then ended up mention, mentioning Miz's tiny balls once more. Maurice ended up slapping the mic out of Logan Paul's hand. Champa then ended up appearing. He ended up, sne- he ended up sneak attacking on Logan Paul. Logan Paul ended up fighting off both Miz and Champa. So Miz ended up finishing Logan Paul off with the skull crushing finale. The crowd chanted one more time, and the Miz didn't listen to them. The crowd was liking what Miz was doing there, hitting Logan Paul with the skull crushing finale because nobody could stand Logan Paul. So, and that was that. This whole segment was fucking awful. Dumps the fire of epic proportions. What a fucking failure this is with impulsive TV with Logan Paul. Call it repulsive TV. Awful. So then we we saw Kevin Patrick. Kevin Patrick was backstage. He was interviewing the Street Profits and also the Usos and Jeff Jarrett. Montez Ford ended up saying that they'll get a preview of SummerSlam tonight. So the Usos... And the prophet started to shove, and Jeff Jarrett ended up keeping them separated. He ended up saying, anyone who gets out of line tonight, he'll remember it at SummerSlam. So Jeff Jarrett ended up walking away, and Jarrett then returned, and they stopped arguing because both the Usos and the Street Prophets were doing their catchphrases, and that was that. And then we had AJ Styles end up coming out. And then Dolph Ziggler, they were going to take on the Alpha Academy. So then the Alpha Academy ended up making their way out. Chad Gable had a mic in hand. And I'm like, oh God, here we go with the stupid shoosh and a thank you. So Chad Gable ended up telling the crowd to shoosh. And I was already like, oh, please cut his damn mic. So Chad Gable ended up telling the crowd not to boo an Olympian and college graduate. He ended up saying that the island they live on will soon sink under the weight of human garbage living on it. So Gable ended up saying that Styles and Ziggler are just a couple of guys thrown together. Gable then compared Styles and Ziggler to the New York Knicks. So that was a shoot there. So he ended up telling the crowd to take a look at a real tag team. And he goes, oh, thank you. God, fucking terrible. 
Chad Gable is on the mic with the whole shush and a thank you. He needs a gimmick change. He really does. He's good in the ring, but his gimmick fucking sucks. Comes off lame and terrible. Every time he comes out with a mic in hand, I'm like, please, please, can they cut his damn mic off? So then we had AJ Styles and Dolph Ziggler versus the Alpha Academy, which was a decent match here. Chad Gable and Dolph Ziggler start off the match. Ziggler ended up in a drop kick to Chad Gable. He tagged in Styles. Styles delivered a drop kick to Gable. Gable then retreated out to the floor. Styles then followed up with a phenomenal forearm to Gable on the floor. And then as Mighty Night Raw came back from the commercial, the Alpha Academy ended up double teaming on Styles. They ended up delivering a double back body drop to Styles. Otis then ended up going for the cover. Styles kicked out at two. Otis ended up trying to ground Styles, but he ended up fighting back to his feet. He flipped out of a backdrop suplex and made the tag to Dolph. Dolph ended up hitting a rising knee strike to Otis, but ran to a back elbow by him. Otis tagged in Gable. Gable came in, delivered a suplex on Ziggler, ended up hitting a uh, German suplex to uh, Ziggler. Gable then climbed up to the top turnbuckle. He missed the moonsault because Ziggler moved out of the way, but uh, Gable landed on his feet. Dolph then delivered a super kick to Gable, to which he went for the cover, and Otis broke up the pin. Styles then ended up coming in. Otis ended up catching his dive. Styles then ended up delivering a Pele kick to clear Otis out of the ring, and Dolph Ziggler then hit the zigzag on Gable. He ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Styles and Dolph ended up winning the match. Overall, this was a decent match, in my opinion. And then we end up uh, knowing that there's a new match added for the SummerSlam card. So it's going to be the Mysterios, Ray and Dominic, versus the Flopman Day. And it's going to be a no disqualification match. So that's taking place Saturday at SummerSlam. There you go. And then they ran down the whole card for SummerSlam. To which this build for SummerSlam has been absolutely terrible. No hype going into it. Main event. The Bloodline. Roman Reigns and the Usos versus Rio and the Street Profits. Six-man tag. This was a decent match here. Dawkins and Jimmy Uso start off the match. They locked up. Dawkins ended up delivering a flying back elbow to Jimmy. He ended up going for the cover. Jimmy kicked out at two. Dawkins then tagged in Ford. They ended up delivering a double team on Jimmy. Jimmy pushed Ford into his corner and tagged in Jay. Jay ended up choking Ford across the middle rope. So the crowd was chanting for the Usos. Ford then delivered a drop kick and tagged in Riddle. Riddle started fighting away with some kicks in the corner. Jimmy ended up charging in, but he ended up going over the top rope out to the floor. Ford ended up hitting a flip dive to Jimmy on the floor. And as Mighty Raw came back from the commercial, Jay was in control of the match on Riddle. So Reigns ended up taking it to the match. Reigns ended up repeatedly clotheslining Riddle in the corner. Reigns ended up hitting a flying clothesline that floored Riddle. He then delivered a vertical suplex to Riddle. He ended up, getting the, he ended up going for the cover, and Riddle kicked out at two. Reigns tagged in Jay. Jay then delivered an uppercut, which sent Riddle into the corner. Jay then ended up missing a splash, and Riddle tagged in Montez Ford. Montez Ford delivered a clothesline to Jay and some kicks. Reigns ended up making the blind tag. He caught Ford with the Uranagi. He ended up going for the cover, and Ford kicked out too. So Reigns ended up bringing Ford into his corner and tagged in Jimmy. Montez Ford was bleeding from his face. So we had blood here in the match. So Jimmy ended up delivering some elbow strikes to Ford and then delivered a headbutt. He ended up going for the cover, and Ford kicked out too. Jay tagged in, and the Usos... Did a double team on Ford. 
And as Mighty Raw came back from the commercial, Jimmy was shown working on Montez Ford, started choking him across the middle rope. So Reigns ended up tagging in. He ended up hitting a drive-by drop kick to Ford. Reigns ended up punching down Ford in the corner. And towards the end of the match, we had Real end up catching Reigns, coming back to the ring with a drape and DDT. Real ended up setting up for the RKO. Reigns powered out of that. Reigns hit the spear to Riddle. And he ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Roman Reigns and the Usos ended up winning the match. Of course, they had to win it. So, post-match, Seth Rollins ended up making his way out. Seth Rollins coming out. Looked like he was wearing uh, Michael Jackson's attire because he had the sparkles on the jacket and then the shoes. You know, Seth Rollins channeling his Michael Jackson there with that attire on, on him. So Rollins strolled past Reigns in the entrance aisle. Rollins ended up attacking Riddle, sent him outside the ring. Rollins ended up running down Riddle with the ring steps. He then hit the stomp to Riddle on the floor. Rollins ended up sending Riddle's head into the top half of the ring steps because it was leaning on the bottom half. And then, once again, Rollins hit the stomp to Riddle on the ring steps. And pretty much that was how Monday Night Raw went off the air. Overall, this was a decent show. It wasn't great. It's not bad. But overall... You know, not as terrible as the show has been. So, this was a watchable show tonight. Even though it was a go-home show, it did nothing to hype you up for SummerSlam this Saturday. And that's typical WWE there. But anyways, that's it for the Monday Night Raw review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. Come subscribe, and I will see you all Wednesday night for AW Dynamite. So, see you then.